Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Jade Alberts from Calgary, Alberta, and I'm a small business strategist influencer, and my passion is helping small businesses grow and succeed. Sharing stories and knowledge is why I started the Telling It Like It Is Facebook Live, and please feel free to ask questions during, before, or after uh, the broadcast. I'd also like to thank Rogers Insurance for sponsoring our, uh, our talk. They are, they take the human side to, to insurance and they are huge supporters of uh, small businesses throughout Alberta and Canada. So stay tuned to see how you can find out details after the fact. Uh, today's guest is Ron Thiel from Xpan Interactive. Ron, thank you so much for joining me and how are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm really grateful to be here. Thanks, Jade. And uh, I'm glad that we can finally connect. Oh, well, I mean... Between all your worldly travels and growing your company, it's it's good that you can uh, sit down and share your knowledge for 15 minutes. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. As, as they say for small business, you know, we have the freedom to work uh, whichever 16 hours a day we want. So it's uh, <laughs> I'm uh, grateful we have this time. <laughs> oh, so true. So true. I'll give a brief introduction for Ron here and then we'll uh, we'll get into it. Uh, Ron is the founder and CEO of Xpan Interactive. They are a Calgary-based digital agency and North American leader in development of digital knowledge experiences for large corporations. Since 2001, Ron has led stellar team of instructional designers, multimedia developers, 3D and video artists, writers, programmed, programmers, and project managers, helping large organizations enhance their workforce with superb digital knowledge solutions. A popular pre presenter and speaker, he has been on the podium for Austin South by Southwest, the Banff Center, the Institute for Performance and Learning, the Banff New Media Institute, the Calgary and Alberta Economic Development, the Calgary Chamber of Commerce, and the American Public Transit Transportation Association. So that's an impressive list of places <laughs> where you've, you've talked wrong. That is absolutely awesome. Now, now that XBAN has been around for 17 years, I guess... You know, let's let's think back. You know, how did you start this company? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, it's a you know a serendipitous journey I've, I've I've led in my life, and so as an entrepreneur, I'm actually you know hard to hold a day job for myself. So you know, so Xpan was one of my uh, I think my seventh company, and I started off actually in the '80s, late '80s. Uh, you know, went to UBC as a studied to be a geophysicist, and never did that for a day in my life. <laughs> And uh, my dream was either to become a musician or a photographer, so I chose the photography route and um, started a newspaper and, and went, uh, spent 10 years as a photojournalist and, um, you know, sort of traveling and, and doing magazine work and corporate work. And then in the, uh, you know, in the, in the 90s, as the sort of the digital economy started to grow and the Internet came along, um, I, you know, the, the inner nerd in me basically, um, you know, took over and I got to learn a little bit more about that and uh, get a little more web savvy and become uh, taking my stories of, uh, of online. Uh, I moved to Calgary actually and uh, got to be an Albertan in 1999. And as I sort of built my network, I realized that uh, the people I were talking to were more interested about knowledge and uh, building workforces. You know, the, the baby boomer uh, generation was having this mass exodus uh, outside the workforce and the organizations were struggling to capture their knowledge and retain it and transfer it to a new a new workforce. Uh, so being the naive entrepreneur that I was, I thought, hey, I could do that. And um, we ended up um, starting Xpan with a couple of buddies and uh, pitched a job to uh, Calgary Transit here. Um, we were, uh, my partners at the time were well versed in the transit industry. And we, uh, we ended up winning a very large bid to train the mechanics here at uh, Calgary Transit. And um, Lo and behold, we uh, we got some venture capital. We we ended up acquiring a few other companies, and Xpan was born in this sort of mod podge of, you know, a blended world. And you know, quickly we we scaled and uh, you know went through all the growing pains of a startup world. And so that's sort of how we came together. And uh, um, at this point now, I'm the you know the those partners have retired and moved on, and I'm the, uh, the the last man standing. And I have a new partner now that is helping me out these days. Well, no, that's awesome. I mean, that's a uh, that's quite the voyage from photography into uh, into e learning. That is uh, that is amazing. I don't think a lot of people would would take that being such an artist. But I guess having uh, that being said, you know, e learning is almost you have to be. It's like an art. It is a it is a storytelling environment for us. Um, yeah. you know, e learning has come a long way, and it's uh, has its sort of stigma uh, as a as a medium for training. But we've always approached it as a as a story. 
um, and, and telling and creating an experience that we can bring people into to learn. No, absolutely. So I guess, I mean, in 17 years, the e-learning ch- uh, industry has changed, I'm sure, quite a bit. I mean, are, what are you seeing now? What are some of the trends? Is it AR? Is it uh, VR? Um, can you expand on that a bit? Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is actually what I do speak at the conferences uh, quite a bit about in terms of, uh, you know, we're, we're undergoing this massive transformation in what I call digital knowledge. E-learning, you know, it's spent many years, probably a couple of decades, uh, somewhat stagnant when it comes to just transferring knowledge online. Uh, whereas now, in the last three years, we're actually undergoing a, a disruption. And uh, AR, VR, as you mentioned, is one one sort of uh, trajectory it's going. So taking people into a completely immersive world, uh, taking knowledge into a sort of this, um, whether it's virtual, cinematic. Uh, so AR and VR are becoming a, a big part of that. At Xpan, we, we are uh, developing AR and VR solutions that are sort of changing how people think and feel about knowledge as well. And then the other side of where the industry is going is more towards um, what I call sort of a agnostic or multi, you know, micro learning where there's now, you should be able to find the knowledge you want, where you want it, when you want it. Um, you know, I look at my kids when they can find it, you know, they can find anything on YouTube and, yes. and quickly learn, but corporations are, are taking on that modality of providing real time uh, knowledge across any medium on any platform and providing that uh, with uh, some great tools out there as well. Yeah. I, I, I always, I'm always fascinated when I hear that people are like talk about YouTube as the world's largest learning channel and people just think, Oh, we just post stupid videos there. But I mean, a prime example, my sink was leaking the other day. And what's the first thing I did? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. I ended up having to call the guy because I'm not very talented that way. But <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, and humans were already, you know, habituated of how we consume digital information. YouTube's a great example. So we know our phones are now attached to us, and so why not? Actually, you know, one of our missions at Xpan is to, you know, change the way people consume digital information and turn it into knowledge and change behavior for the better. And that's really what we're we're seeing as a as a uh, our future for knowledge. Absolutely, and as as we talked about before, I mean, the people are the heartbeat of the company, and and to have them having a continued learning, and and if it can be e learning and done on uh, even if it's company time, it'll make the it'll make them better. That's for sure. Absolutely. So I guess in uh, in your time frame, uh, you must have a, seen a few ups and downs in the industry. You know, being in Calgary, we've gone through a few uh, a few of those. You know, can you share a couple examples or an example and and how you overcame it? Oh yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. Especially in uh, in Calgary, and Alberta, where there's a you know a higher ebb and flow of economies here. Um, we were uh, you know downtown bricks and mortar office for the first number of years, and in 2008, when I, we had a that sort of large crash, we were forced to re-examine where we are as an organization. So we we pivoted quite quickly during that. Where, you know, we were forced to because of how quickly everything crashed, and we yeah. took our whole organization to a virtual one. Um, so we we got out of being siloed in terms of what our, our service offering was and where who we were serving, and we went virtual across essentially across North America, and uh, finding people that were not necessarily just here. Um, so that you know invested heavily into you know the online environments for working uh, collaboratively online, and uh, we we built a team that worked from home, and that actually worked well. Uh, and then in 2015, when we had our, our latest sort of downturn in the economy. Uh, we were forced again to pivot and look at uh, other sectors. Um, so we primarily provide uh, e-learning services to uh, transportation, energy, and medicine uh, sectors and large corporations. So we were we took those and expanded those into the U.S. and now globally as well. So multi-language, multi-geography, and then uh, other sectors like government and NGOs as well. So diversifying our, our client base and geography was really forced upon us in this last downturn. And ironically, now we've actually come back full circle and come back into an office this year and brought our team back into a, a place where the innovation and collaboration can actually uh, can can be a little more uh, uh, close close knit. You know, I think that's such a fabulous story because we've I've had people that have had co working spots and brick and mortar. And to see you come full circle is, is something that you don't really see. You don't see people once they go remote or they go virtual. You very rarely see them come back. How how's that transition been for your team? Yeah, it's been wonderful. It's it's been actually uh, sort of fascinating for me as the as a, sort of the owner to watch 
the culture build upon itself and have the team sort of take that upon themselves to build their own culture in the office. And then the, the innovation and the creativity that goes with that when we're, you know, shoulder to shoulder uh, creating projects. Yeah. So our, our core team uh, being in the office is sort of working hand in hand on solutions for our clients. And then, you know, we are scalable in the sense that we have this whole virtual world that we have this great process for to bring in the talent that we need as needed as well. So it's, it's actually worked very well so far. Oh, that's awesome. That, that That's a great story. So I guess when, when we talk, I mean, I focus a lot more on small businesses and, and a lot of my, uh, the, the watchers and followers, uh, you know, are smaller business entrepreneurs, you know, either, you know, e-learning, is it, you know, how, how should it work for a, maybe a team of five to 10? Should it be done as a team? Can you still do it, uh, you know, uh, individually? What would you recommend? Uh, yeah, I mean, those are, those are actually good questions. And what we're seeing is more and more is, is um, small businesses utilizing e-learning, um, bringing that knowledge. And so the, the way I usually approach it is, is it's more about containing knowledge that can be transferable. And uh, to, you know, whether it's a, a, a workforce that's transitioning or growing, uh, you know, who owns that knowledge that, that the small business, re, you know, needs. So building digital knowledge is, of course, you can amortize that cost over a long, longer period of time. Um, so whether it's a, a, you know, a social environment, humans are social. So taking it, Taking these kind of things together is certainly, you know, we, we believe in sort of peer to peer mentoring, uh, allowing connections between learners. But again, going back to how we actually consume information, people want that access on their own. So well, I always say that, you know, have that access on an individual basis with the ability for them to actually have peer to peer or going and asking the questions they need to and providing that environment. Um, so that's sort of one way small businesses can actually. Uh, utilize e-learning. The other one is actually creating more revenue streams uh, for them. So creating products that can, you know, most small businesses have specialties and wouldn't it be wonderful to actually share some of those, um, you know, that institutional knowledge and create more revenue as well. So creating products online as well is another avenue that small businesses can use uh, e-learning in their, in their business. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's great, great advice. advice. I mean, a lot of, uh, I find a lot of small businesses, you know, ignore the continued learning process and they just think that, oh, we're small. We, we talk a lot. Our communication is great, but yet it really isn't. And there, there's a lot of disconnect. So I, I really do believe that, you know, having people in there and having a peer to peer and having honest meetings with your is so important. Is there any type of, um, I guess what would you recommend? It would it would be kind of a custom thing, or 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 can you buy something off the shelf for this type of stuff? Yeah, there's. I mean, there's a you know, there's. I sort of look back into this industry, and it's sort of where where video or YouTube, when that came on in, in, in you know the early two thousands, where all that content became user focused, and you know the, the just the amount of content being developed. So there's no shortage of tools. No shortage of on the shelf, off the shelf tools and, and content out there that you can you can pick up. Um, you know, relevancy and culture is a big piece. So, uh, you know, having content that can be engaging as well as relevant to the culture of the organization is is really key. Um, having just generic tools or generic off the shelf things are great. Uh, however, getting people to engage in them is the is the other piece. So the tools are are certainly it's like having that hammer. How are you going to use it? <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> But uh, so if, if there if the affordability is there, building custom content relevant to the culture and the brand is really key. We find that uh, just for our research and the metrics that we have, if you can build content that is aligned with the culture and the brand of the organization, you're going to increase engagement for that training uh, like tenfold, uh, rather than having an off the shelf piece. So there's a there's a difference in ROI when you get when you're building e-learning, and it's uh, understandable that small businesses may not have a large a large amount of uh, investment capabilities in that one, but it's a good place to start when it comes to that relevant information. No, oh, that's great advice. That is, and I, and I, I truly believe that it should be custom because off the shelf is is really generic, and and you're and no company is, is generic, and, and do you want to be jumped, you know, lumped in as a generic? So I think that's great. Um, I guess my last question for you, Ron, is one that I ask everybody: If you had one piece of advice for a small business or an entrepreneur, what would it be? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of advice out there, a lot of bumper stickers, as I say. Um, for us as a small business, it, it always comes back to the people, of course. Um, people and building a culture that uh, works together well will trump any other, uh, I find, business advice. 
Um, so finding those the right people is always the, the right key for us and uh, giving them, enabling them to uh, take on that leadership and, and utilizing their skills and their passions and, and ensuring they care about what we do. So, you know, we, uh, we have a good family here of people. Uh, the second piece I'll throw in there is just giving them the systems and processes underneath that to actually execute and be efficient and, and investing the time to build those processes as well. But so there, those are my two pieces there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know on the back of my business card, it says it starts with people. And, and I truly believe that if and I've said this many, many times, you know, the people are the heartbeat of the company and they need and they need to be, you know, they need to buy and they need to think of it as their own to, to make, you know, a company succeed. So that's, that's excellent advice. Awesome advice. Excellent. So I guess uh, I, I, that, that wraps us up for today. So Ron, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and sharing your story. It's a wonderful Calgary success story. And, uh, and uh, now that you're, you know, you're building and growing and traveling the world, I, I mean, all the best to you. And I'm sure we'll cross paths uh, more than once in the next year. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Jay. I'm really happy to be here today. Thanks so much. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And again, a special thank you to Rogers Insurance for sponsoring this uh, video. For any extra discounts, you can go to rogersinsurance.ca backslash Jade. And they, again, they are a wonderful Calgary success story as well. So please check them out. If you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to ask them after the fact you watch us. You can email myself, any of my social media accesses or uh, webpage, jadealbertsconsulting.com. Um, Ron's information is also in the uh, comments section and uh, we'll go from there. So Ron, thanks again. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much.